today we're going to be working on a SRM2620. Uh, we got this from a customer and they need it cleaned up. They need us to get it up and running again. Uh, it obviously has a carburetor issue. We're going to clean up everything. We're going to check the spark resistor and we're going to make sure that this unit is functional by the time we give it back to the customer. Stay with us now and see how to fix this unit. Action. Hey, this is Budgie Small Engine Repair. The first thing we're going to do on this machine is we're going to check see how the spark's doing. We'll get in there and we'll test it and see if we got any spark on this thing. I can open this thing. Okay, this is the spark uh, tester that we use right here. This goes in to the machines, snaps in. This goes in the spark plug. Okay, and the way we do it, Spark? Yeah. All right. Okay, so we got spark. So it looks like we may have a, a carburetor issue on this. I don't know if you guys could see the spark on that, but it was there. So I'm gonna take right way to or take apart the carburetor and see what we got going here. A lot of times these carburetors get dirty just sitting. Gas gets nasty in there and it messes everything up. Or the dust from cutting. Alright, here we go. Let me take a look at this real quick. So two standard screws, not too much. Put that in there. Yeah, it's fine. this up you always open this up that way if there's any pressure built in here when you pull the line out it doesn't squirt all over yourself I like to twist the line back and forth to loosen it you never know how long these things have been sitting in Just so you know at home, one of the best things you could do is put a steady cam down, record everything you do so you know where every single nut and bolt goes. It's one of the things that we do, you might not notice, but we run into an issue, we go back to the footage. Well, as I'm sitting here right now, I can smell the nasty gas. Um, bad gas gives off a very different odor, and it's very stinky on this well you got three screws all right take the cylinder out okay Let's look in see. there yeah how does it look to you it looks like it needs cleaned yeah look at that Get these screws out of here. Right there, yeah. Alright, we can put this thing aside for now. We're gonna dig into here. Take this off. Okay, first part is I'm gonna go inside the carburetor. Primer ball looks good.
see the diaphragm yet? Diaphragm's down in there. If you have a little one here. It's beautiful. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's so technical. Okay. Everything looks okay, but I, what I'm probably going to do is just spray her down real good with uh, some carb cleaner. Okay, now we're... And these are all the same basic screws that go into this unit, right? Yeah, it's just different sizes. Some are longer, some are shorter. Hey, is the thing wet? 60 bucks for the crate. How's that sound? Right. Sorry, I didn't know this. Wow. Okay. Diaphragm that doesn't look bad. Nice. When you check a diaphragm, you want the spring back. Okay, like that. Okay, and you and hear you, that noise too. If you look over here, this is this is where your screen is. Fuel screen. A little bit of junk Watch. in there. Watch. Oh wow. Okay. That is cool. Yeah, it's like a heartbeat, you know? Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so I'm still gonna take this off. And see what we got in there. Oh, very gently. That's a nice one. Usually we, they're real bad. Okay. Here's where your fuel goes in. Right here. Okay. That diaphragm holds that down. And when this area gets filled up, the diaphragm comes up, which releases the spring and pushes this down into the hole. You wanna take that apart today too? Yes. All right. Now when taking this apart, it's very important that you hold on to it because it will take off on you. I can see it. Much better. This screwdriver. You got a smaller screwdriver? That should be good. Okay. So, when I'm doing this, I take it about like that, not all the way out. Then I release very slowly. If you could see that you got your spring right here. Beautiful. Okay. So, you want to, that spring takes off. Okay, I have to loosen a little bit more. Screw out. All right, here we go. It's doing it again. <laughs> okay, here's your spring anyway. Nice. Okay, that's. Do not lose the spring, or you're done. You just gotta go buy a new one. That's all. Yeah, right. Whole new carburetor. Yeah. Uh, whole new spring. All right. This is the other parts. Wow. Beautiful. Look how clean that one kind of looks, but we're going to need to get that tool in there. See the screen here, usually there's a lot of stuff in there, but this screen looks pretty good. So yeah, it does look good right now. Uh, I'm mess with that. It, are you recording? Yes. You want to cut for right now? No, I'm going to take this apart. Look under here, make sure everything's good. Wash this off a little bit. And he's just using standard carb cleaner. That's all he's using. Obviously, he's using tools, but at the end of the day, the only 
thing we've needed so far is carb cleaner. Okay, right now we're just gonna put everything back together and see how we did. Was a little bit of gunk in there, but not nothing totally serious. I guess enough to make it run bad. All right, we're gonna be right back and take a uh, 10 second break. All right, now I'm gonna put back the spring and reinsert this. Okay, in order to do it, you gotta put your everything together at once and hold the spring. All right, there we go. Okay, once you get it lined up, the spring is under my finger. Just slide this over so it meets inside that hole. While holding it down, you need to tighten that screw again. Keep should it, it be firm or should it be a little? Well, like about like that, just Nice and a little snug, not super. Okay, so it's good movement. Beautiful. Good movement. All right. So now we're going to put the diaphragm back on. Now, there are several kinds of diaphragms. This one here has a long tongue. Okay, there's some that are real short, some that are in, in different shapes and everything, depending on what your unit has. Reinstalling the diaphragm, then putting the cover on it. Screw it to it. What's your secret to making sure you don't tighten that too tight and it gets uh, screwed in properly? Let's take your time. Let's make it a little snug, that's all. All we gotta do is make sure it seals. Okay, so you got these two little poles sticking out here and here. Okay, you line them up with this here and here. Okay, sometimes you gotta move it around to find the right hole. Once you get it in there, it won't move around, it stays put. Then you come over, your primer ball. Put that on. Make sure <clears throat> your protectors are protecting your intake and out. Then with the long screws, you want to put them in because it has to go all the way down through this into back, back into the carburetor. Nice. All right, I'm going to use this little screwdriver just to put these in. I don't tighten them all the way up until I get everything somewhat snug and then I go back and, and tighten them. I always go across from myself. Beautiful. Okay, now I can tighten. 
snug everything up. Alright, I'll give you a little test. I hear the noise. That's a good sign when you're doing this if you hear that noise. Okay, now we're gonna reinstall this. You can come around, you wanna explain it? the other way, Frank. I do too. All right. There we go. Yeah. Could get a good angle at this. Okay, then with the, the small screws, just screw it back together. With the other, I don't, I don't tighten them all the way up until I'm done putting them all in there. And we get a nice seat in there. go there nice everything looks pretty good come over here we'll check these lines out they look doable now if you want to know how to replace lines we have many videos on replacing lines, um, like even how to replace a gas filter. Gaskets. <clears throat> like that. Remember which line goes to what. And this one is pretty easy because they're colored. put on Okay, when you get to this point, don't forget, drain your gas. Whatever gas was in there was smelling pretty nasty when we were taking this apart. So we're gonna drain it right into this container. Here's your fuel. How's that filter? Yes, your filter looks good. This is your fuel filter right here. Looks nice and clean. We're gonna throw that back in there. And again, we have many videos showing how to replace a fuel filter. Grab me that gas right there in the red can, please. Thanks. Okay, give your give your fuel a little. There. What kind of gas are you putting in here? This is two cycle. Alright, get your gas. 
gas cap back on. Tight. Get this out of the way. You gonna get it to run? I'm hoping. All right, we'll be right back. We're gonna do some tuning and then we'll be right back with you. All right, after tightening the cap, I already primed it. I gave it four pushes on the button. Everything worked good. See the gas coming through the, the, the clear line or the yellow line. So now we're gonna give this a it so that we can't uh, get this little guy to run. I reinstalled the plug. Okay, I put up the choke, made sure it's on on, and we'll give it a try. It still looks like we have an issue here, so we're gonna have to go to the next step. I'll be right back. Action. Okay, um, we're having a problem getting this started. So I'm gonna check the spark plug. Pull that off. Get in here. These are all the things that can go wrong with these machines. There's oh, a lot look of at that. a lot of carbon on there. That could be the problem right there. Now, I was told one time that if you take a cigarette lighter and burn off that carbon and then put a little sandpaper just to smooth it out, it would bring it almost back to new. Back to new. Yeah, baby. I'm cleaning this up a little bit. Some fine sandpaper. Try to get it in there and get it all clean. All right, I'm gonna put this all back together. I'll be back with you in a minute. So we used some sand vapor on the uh, spark plug and a little bit of uh, starting fluid, starting fluid, and just tiny littlest bit of using a lighter. Okay, we're gonna try this, and if this doesn't work, we're going to go into the muffler where the uh, spark resistor is. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you have problems with your uh, machines when the spark resistor is full of oil gunk and really really messed up yeah all right let me give this another try here this is actually good that this is happening because if this happens at home you know you can't have one that runs every time beautiful Have a good one, everybody.